Last year, communities on the east coast of Florida were hit by back-to-back -back storms. First, Hurricane Ian at the end of September. And then, a year ago today, it was Hurricane Nicole. The storm made landfall in Vero Beach with coastal impacts up and down the east coast of Florida. Fox Weather's Brandy Campbell joins us live from Wilbur by the Sea, where some homes are still exposed and damaged along the beach. Brandy, you know, I think many people don't realize how long the road to recovery is, and you can clearly see that behind you. Yeah, that's right, Britta. It's been a year, and some people have expressed to me they hoped things would have gotten much further along. But as you can see, this is what still remains a year later, almost as though no time has passed. You have a roof still collapsed, a pool, all of this because of the beach erosion exaggerated by Nicole after Hurricane Ian. Again, the community hoping they would have gotten further, but still there has been progress since then. Take a look. Hurricane Ian weakened us so badly, and then we had Hurricane Nicole came, which just wiped us out. Things are only going to start deteriorating. 22 buildings in the town over will likely collapse. That erosion, that's the issue out here along the beach. We are approaching high tide here. Hurricane Nicole at a Category 1 was the final storm of 2022 with a rare November landfall, devastating in areas still recovering from Hurricane Ian. An estimated billion dollars of damage was left in its path, almost half of it in Volusia County. You see two bedrooms and a kitchen and a den. And that was Philip Martin's home where he rode out the storm in Wilbur by the sea. The sound when the, when the home was falling apart and falling in was just unbelievable. We were able to save the mailbox. But this, uh, this was a, my beautiful home I love so much. Rebuilding is delayed as he waits for permits to rebuild his seawall first. Phil has two adjacent rental properties. The seawall protected this one, but for his third rental, he fixed some units, but it remains partially exposed as he waits for the county approval to repair instead of demolish it. Lady lived here with us and she had it fixed up beautiful. And it just went right in the water. Philip brought us to Pirates Cove condominiums where he was helping his daughter to open a restaurant when the storms came. Most notable damage is to their deck. So as you can see, it kind of gives you an idea how big it was. We went all the way out to there, all the way across, and we had a beautiful stairwell that went all the way down into the beach. They're waiting on the county to fix its seawall nearby to move forward with their repairs. We've remodeled a building to the tune of $4.5 million with electricians, roofers. Owners have now been able plumber. to return and rent out their condos when they're ready. So what we could control we fixed, but what we can't control is uh, the county area and the beach access and all that nightmare. Seawall damage and erosion are still noticeable. The county is still making repairs and feels their efforts has been outstanding, saying some thought it would take years to get county assets back. Meanwhile, Richard and Philip are worried about tourism. We've got to get a serious plan to replace our beach because we don't have our beach. We have no tourism. Hotel occupancy in July was 15 percent less than the year before, according to Daytona's Convention and Visitors Bureau, attributing it to not only the storm, but sargassum seaweed and more people traveling in internationally post pandemic. Now, while some aspects of Daytona and Wilbur by the sea still need work, Phil's heart is still there. And I'd like to stay right here, but rebuild my house that I love so much. It was a very simple home and I loved it. All right, now this is what's remaining of this home that Phil is hoping to rebuild to make this home complete. But he says he has to attack the seawall first you can see they have trap bags that's still down there placed by the county. He's saying the main issue is to do his seawall, the neighbors next to him, they kind of all have to do it together because if another storm were to come and undermine his seawall, this process would just restart all over again, Britta. Back to you. And Brandy, I'm sure it gets very complicated because who's involved here? I mean, is it the property owner's job to get that pool off of the beach? Or is the county coming in to help? Is that part of the conversation here of why there's still some spots that are really struggling to move forward? Well, with some of the residents that I spoke with, they said they're just having issues getting these uh, problems sorted out with the county, getting permissions mm -hmm. and finding out when they can do certain things. So it seems to be a little confusion there.
and getting the permits, uh, but it does seem to be on the residents, and some of them says, you know, insurance won't even cover all of this as well. And then it comes down to a cost. I mean, if, if you know the work, you know the price tag, it might not be in the mix to get it done in a couple years. Uh, Brandy Campbell reporting live exactly. in Florida this morning as we look back on Hurricane Nicole. I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.